it was just certain things would just fly across the room. I got hit in the head by a, a just tiny little Lego brick. So I'm fairly sceptical anyway, and I was sort of watching the children to see if they were, they were doing it, but it wasn't coming from there. It was just things would just sort of take off. The family from next door were going around hiding all the knives and forks so that they wouldn't fly around. And we, we had no idea what was going to happen. We didn't know. People were end up getting killed. If I hadn't have been there uh, photographing, I think I would have been out the door. But Graham didn't run out of the door. He stayed long after the Daily Mirror photographic assignment had ended. A week later, he was joined by Maurice Gross, a researcher from the Society for Psychical Research. The two men virtually lived in the house for the next six months, and both witnessed events that seemed to defy the laws of physics. It was obvious to me the case was genuine. Everybody was terrified. And uh, it was only a little while, I'd only been there a little while, when I was standing in the kitchen myself, next to the kitchen table, and there was a, um, a T-shirt on the table. And it literally leapt off the table onto the floor, and right in front of me. And I thought, right, well, that's it. You know, I've seen something for myself. And from then onwards, I stuck with the case. Over the coming months, a stream of visitors came to the house. Everyone from research physicists to international demonologists tried to make sense of the things they were witnessing as the events at the house became more and more extreme. It was not just known in the UK, it was known worldwide. Lorraine Warren was one of the expert visitors. Where furniture would move and it would kind of go against the doors so you couldn't open the upstairs doors. Then it reached the point of levitating, where the two girls would levitate and crisscross in the air. Although different phenomena happened all over the house throughout the day and night, Mrs. Harper's eldest daughter, Janet, always seemed to be at the center of these amazing levitations. Now let me tell you about a levitation Please. as seen by independent witnesses. Okay. The baker's roundsman was coming down the road. He heard a terrific commotion going on in the girls' bedroom. The curtains had been pulled aside so he could see quite clearly into, clearly into the room. He saw Janet going round the room in a horizontal manner like this, followed by some books and some toys going round and round. She was floating. Floating. He said, I was terrified. She came right up to the window and he thought she was going to crash into the window and come out. She didn't. She went round again. Now, opposite is a school. And outside the school was a lollipop woman. And she's standing there waiting for the children to come out of school. And she hears a commotion and she looks up. And what does she see? She sees Janet going up and down in a horizontal position like this. And according to the angle and everything we measured, she was going off the bed and 18 inches above the windowsill like this, up and down. So here we have two independent witnesses who saw the levitation at the same time. Because the events at Enfield happened in the days before home video, Graham had to rely on a setup of remotely triggered cameras in an attempt to record any levitation activity that occurred in the girls' bedroom. But although the photographs taken did capture Janet in mid-air, they did not answer the question of how she got there. A lot of the evidence for poltergeist cases is photographic evidence or film evidence, but you never actually see the object rising and moving. It's always while the object is moving. So in other words, uh, in, po in particular cases, if a camera is centered on, for example, this cup in the middle of the air, um, but the difficulty is in interpreting that is we don't see the cup at the point at which it first moved. So we can't attribute the movement to poltergeist necessarily. And that's the difficulty with interpreting a lot of the photographic and film evidence. Is the problem we had was you couldn't, the first picture was never there. The first picture of a sequence, it was too soon. It was only one, once you, through sitting downstairs, heard somebody scream. You then thought, ah, there's something happening now. Press the button. You start to take a sequence of pictures. So you, you never had the first one of her just lying in bed. Right. Don't forget, we're talking about sitting in this house for hours and hours and hours every night. It was just boring. 
for 90 odd percent of the time until something like this happened. And then it takes you by surprise. You suddenly, oh, quick, something happened, press the button. By this time, the first picture you get is of a girl seemingly jumping in the air. Could you be sure that she wasn't jumping? Nope. Because I wasn't there. I was downstairs. This is all shot automatically. But um, you have to be a bit of a masochist to want to do that for fun. So many times a night as well to get thrown out the bed up in the air, land on your face, get up and do it again. That's What's going on here? Janet, who seemed to be the sort of epicenter of just about everything. There was suddenly a, a sort of scream and a crash. And then we ran upstairs and found Janet lying on top of the radio in the corner of her bedroom. I mean, we're talking about an old house here. It was very creaky floorboards, bed springs that make a noise. We could hear everything that was going on. There was no way that she got out of bed, tiptoed across the room, climbed up onto the radio and then screamed and everybody rushed into the room and, yeah, something else has happened. On the 10th of December, four months after the team first arrived at the Enfield house, something remarkable happened. The poltergeist seemed to take control of Janet, and suddenly she began speaking with the voice of an old man. Morris made this extraordinary recording. This one, I have to tell you what he says, because otherwise you won't understand exactly what he's saying. Right. I'm 72 years old, and I come from Durance Park Graveyard, and I'm right near the church where Rena lives. All my friends come from there as well, and we all make a gang and go to the park, and we picked your house because I used to live here. Disturbing. That is an 11 year old girl. The amount of evidence the Enfield researchers had collected was impressive, but it was difficult to see how it could provide me with any new information. I needed to talk to Janet, the girl at the centre of the case, to find out how the event seemed to her. I knew she had not given any interviews since she'd grown up, and I wasn't sure if she'd agreed to talk to me. But I called her anyway, left a message on her voicemail, and hoped for a reply. After the break, the investigation continues when Janet gives her first television interview. I felt I was possessed because I felt used so much by the poltergeist. A few days after I left a phone message, Janet, the girl at the centre of the Enfield case, responded to my call. She'd never given an interview before. She agreed to meet me in a small town on the coast. As a child at the centre of the poltergeist activity, she'd apparently had first-hand experiences that would have driven many adults over the edge. According to the stories, she'd levitated, seen objects fly around the room, walked through walls, and been possessed by a spirit who spoke through her. All that while she was a vulnerable 11-year-old trying to cope with her mother's divorce. Now she was 40, married, with children of her own, and she didn't want to be recognised, so she agreed to be interviewed if we kept her face hidden. Some of the things that happened, like levitation, the voices, like things flying around and furniture moving, being tipped over, People would say that's impossible. It's just hard, really, for people to understand, and people would take them if you say, oh, this is a load of rubbish. 
But when you experience it and you know that it is real, and so many witnesses, professionals on the outside have come in and actually seen things and experienced things, you know, we just don't take no notice of what the critics say now. Janet, thank you so much for coming to meet me because I know.